understand uh, that I may not understand the people. Nakedu, Adema, Venom. Let me also use this opportunity to welcome distinctively a son of the soil, the vice presidential candidate of Labour Party, distinguished senator, Dr. Baba Ahmed, PhD. Dr. Baba Ahmed, PhD, a distinguished entrepreneur of repute. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted this evening to be the anchor and to state categorically that for all of us here, it is a patriotic call to duty where the concept of citizens' engagement has come to bear. This is a unique opportunity and indeed a historic moment in the history of northern Nigeria, considering the fact that the era of competition is paving way for collaboration and shared aspirations with convictions and undoubtedly disease organizations that have consummated this very important engagement exercise are convinced that the North is united in every front, in every revocation for the beauty of our diversity notwithstanding. The candidates of the main political parties that are invited to have this engagement as a prelude to the 2023 general elections to interface with key stakeholders is championed by the joint area committee, a coalition of main groups based in northern Nigeria. They include the Arawas Consultative Forum, ACF, Northern Elders Forum, NEF, San Madubello Memorial Foundation, the Arewa House, Jabir Mata Arewa, and in the Arewa Research and Development Project. This is a proactive response as the 2023 election beckons. It is urgent to objectively interrogate the issues and the rigorous processes of choosing new set of leaders. In that case, there is an, there is an urgent need to honestly dialogue between them and the citizens. And you, the citizens, you are the people, you matter, and that is why they have honored you with their physical presence. To achieve this objective, a coalition of the men's civil society organizations mentioned above decided to invite and hold an interactive meeting with the presidential candidates of the key political parties. It is our expectation that the meeting will enable us to obtain vital clarifications and pledges or documented evidence aptly captured and will be made available to all northern stakeholders. In conclusion, the coalition is unanimous, objective, unbiased, and together they are concerned about all the challenges facing northern Nigeria, irrespective of our differences in ethnic, religious, or tribal uh, differences. They are aware that records don't lie and we are determined to add value to our march towards building a better United Nations. Together, instead of harping on too much that divide us, we are determined to rather focus on the potentials, opportunities, and strengths that unite us, while taking advantage of the diversity that characterizes our development. Specifically, emphasis must be needed to be based on our sense of brotherhood across different ethnic divides. We need a leader who is capable of uniting diverse interest groups, maximize our potentials, 
and speed up the growth without a doubt, Nigeria required leadership. The type that is charismatic, focused, courageous, capable of galvanizing our vast human material endowment, strength and opportunities as a propelling force for the growth and development of Nigeria. When you juxtapose that with the northern challenges, we are looking for that person that can vibrate and champion our, this, our interest. Thank you as you attend this gathering. I'd like to welcome the candidate once again and to say that we have some set of ground rules and I'm going to read it loud and clear. And anybody who tried to violate it, we are adding the ground rules right away. Number one, the participants should maintain utmost discipline throughout the meeting. The participants should be seated and not roam around, no loitering, no side talks. And when asked to speak, participants should be strict and respect time. Since this is not a political campaign rally, there should be no cheering, no jeering, no booing, certainly no pressing. And lastly, all questions should be made in writing and submitted to the anchor. Thank you as I welcome and I hand over to the chairman of this session. Uh, let me invite him to give his uh, welcome address. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. Excellency, 
as you explain how you plan to address them when, inshallah, you use the election and take office as a president next year. To help facilitate this dialogue, we have prepared a short memoranda in which we identified some of the more urgent issues and other matters of concern to Northern Nigeria today. In addition, we plan to make comprehensive report of the entire proceedings. When all is said and done, the outcome of this dialogue shall present a covenant between the incoming president and Northern Nigeria. Once again, you are welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, our chairman. Let me have the honor to invite two of our elders who will represent the interests of all our other elders here seated and those that are not present here. Their respected voice, voices will come to bear. Let me have the honor to invite Professor Ango Abdelai the chairman and convener of Northern Elders Forum. Let me briefly, for want of time, simply welcome our distinguished special guests, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, whom I have known for quite some time now. You yeah, are most welcome together with the entourage. And my I, on behalf of Northern Elders Forum, that have contributed towards the establishment of this platform, thank all those who have worked very, very hard to make sure that uh, this forum comes together because of the important issue that is uh, facing this country. There's no doubt that the country is being challenged in so many multifarious ways and has been yearning for a new direction for quite some time. We've been independent now for over 62 years, or about 62 years. But we have always hoped that Nigeria would be far ahead of where it is at the moment. And some of the issues that have always uh, been blamed for this is poor leadership. And this is why over the years, perhaps, we have not done what we ought to be doing, like we are doing now, to at any time interrogate, subject the people who are aspiring to be our leaders to be subjected, to be interrogated in terms of what they intend to do to help in the development of this country. So our presidential candidates, I join my other colleagues here in welcoming you here uh, to share with us your views as well as our views in terms of the state of the nation today and what you expect through your leadership this country should be in years to come. So once again, we are very happy to have you here. It is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Nome and this forum and indeed on behalf of the platform. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate 
Can you hand over the microphone to our other elder, Mr. Aldo Ogbe of the Arawa Consultative Forum? I will please, please, those at the back, don't disrupt this proceedings with your noise. Thank you. Your Excellency, sir. The chairman of this occasion. Uh, one of our guests, Mr. Peter B, and his lovely mate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. This is a rather unusual occasion, put together by a group of persons and interests from the north, taking slightly different routes but heading in the same direction. You have heard Professor Andrew Abdullahi speak. We need not repeat everything he said. But the whole point is this, that our nation is experiencing pretty bad weather. Our economic situation is very, very fragile. Our currency is dying at an alarming rate because some of us grew up when the Naira was $1.50. $1.50 to one Naira. And one Naira to one pound sterling. Then suddenly we had reforms. One of them baptized the Structural Adjustment Program, 1986. And we began to auction our currency on a weekly basis. Now it's 740 naira to one dollar. If you become president of Nigeria, what can you do to give life to this currency? Because the more you devalue your currency, the more you devalue your people. We have armies of youths with nothing to do. We have a local government system that is not functioning in many states. If you go to the local government area, you'll find nobody in the office until payday. And yet, allocations are sent to them every month. Averagely 200 million a month times 774. They're talking of 150 billion a month. Going down to local governments and trace what we do with them. And young men and women are leaving their villages for the cities in search of life. And if they can't find life, they go into crime. And they kidnap. And they kill. And they do ritual uh, sacrifice. Without going too far into the list of the odd things happening to us, we want to ask you, what can you do? How will you do India became independent in 1947. August 15th. India has more ethnic groups than Nigeria. India has more serious religious problems than Nigeria. There was a time an Indian Prime Minister would go on radio, Prime Minister Shastri, 1965, begging Indians to fast for two days a week because there was no food in India. Today, India is the largest producer of rice on planet Earth. But more than that, India has never had a coup. Not once. But Pakistan has never sustained one government elected to a successful end. Every regime elected in Pakistan has collapsed halfway. We have almost experienced the same thing. Seven coups in the first 50 years. So as a new set of people coming on, you will talk to us frankly. And the reason we are meeting is because we want Nigeria to succeed. And it has to succeed. The alternative is unthinkable. Imagine any one of you in a refugee camp with a bowl in your hand waiting for food. It is possible if we are not careful. And it must not happen. So we thank you very much for coming. We'll pray for you, work with you, Give us your agenda and then carry on with your campaigns. 
The rest is in the hands of the Almighty God. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. That is Mr. Aldo Ogbe, the chairman of Arewa Consultative Forum, SCF. Thank you very much, sir. On this note, we'd like to humbly invite the man of the moment, the man we have all been waiting for, to come and talk to us. From photos, his agenda. Mr. Twitter Obi, you're welcome, sir. Somebody said I didn't introduce you. I said, do, do you need introduction? <laughs> Please, um, please, yes, please. The chairman of this occasion and all the dignitaries that are here, let me very respectfully stand on all existing protocols as already has been mentioned by my dear brother. I sincerely thank all the organizers and all those who are involved in this interactive section because I believe this is what we need in the nation. So I thank you for this wonderful organization and what you've been able to do. What you are doing today, I know is you mentioned that is for interactive section for the north, but it's for Nigeria. Because whatever we're going to do here will affect the entire Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. And I'm running for the office of the president of Nigeria. So I believe that what you are doing is for the interest of Nigeria. And I thank you sincerely for that effort. I didn't know, and our chairman brief, chairman, our vice chairman told me I was going to make a statement. I was actually expecting an interactive section. But I'll try and make the statement and then go to the interactive section. As I thank all of you, I listened to what the two leaders have said, Professor Ango and Professor and Aldo was said when they talked about the problem of the country. Everybody is aware of the problem of our country today. And that problem, as difficult as this, I believe it is solvable. It is not impossible. Nations have passed through that. Today our country has qualified as a first state because I have made the two ingredients of what the first state is all about. The two major ingredients, when you are no longer in control of your territory and when you are no longer in control of your economy, we are no longer in control of this two. So we've qualified for it. But and that has produced its own result. Because people ask me, how did we get here? What is happening here? I said, no country will not go through what we are going through today. If you have about 100 million people living in poverty, you are bound to have crisis. If you have 35% unemployment, in fact, we're very lucky for a nation of our size to have 35 unemployment. When you combine it with unemployment, it's about 60%. Out of which 60% of those involved 
and your young ones in their productive age doing nothing with all the energy of the youth and they don't have anywhere to it's bitter to do anything you have a crisis you have 20 out of school children and coupled with this unemployment and youth unemployment you have a high drug prevalence drug prevalence in Nigeria today is 14.8% when the global average is 5.8 is the highest anyone. I can go on and on and tell you the problems of Nigeria, but most of them you know already. So they are not things that you want to hear any longer. What you want to hear is the solutions. Because everybody knows the problem, everybody is suffering, everybody wants to know it. Nigeria is not breath of ideas. Nigeria has not breath of ideas or a breath of manifestos. There's very good reading manifestos. There's very good reading ideas in Nigeria. If you go where they are packed, they are beautiful for them. What is lacking is the institutional, the institutional weakness that is not allowed to deliver them and the political way. The government we intend to form, I am that team, without team, we do things differently. We want to bring a transformative government, purposeful government, that will start dealing with the issues. And those issues are known and very clear. The issue of security, which will be decisive. The issues of unity, which will be decisive. The issues of our economy, because it is critical. If you go today, out of the 10 poorest states in Nigeria, 10 is in the north. school children, it is in the north that we have the highest set of school children in the global earth, northern Nigeria. In terms of school kidnapping, it is the highest in the whole world. But when you look at what is happening globally today, the greatest need of the world, the greatest assets, the greatest need of the world today is food. The greatest asset of, the, of Nigeria today is in the north. I know people have come here to tell you, or will tell you in the future about oil. Oil is an expiring and diminishing asset. I know people will tell you about other natural resources. Those natural resources cannot be quantified with the physical asset God gave Nigeria and gave particularly in the North. And that is what we need ultimately to ignite and start. Nigeria today is 200 million and we have all these problems. It's estimated it will be about 300 million by 2030 is a so that we are going to be about 400 by 2050. If we have this problem of this crisis, we